Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Welcome to today's Sea Time and Harvest Broadcast. And Bishop, I just said I'm so blessed and I'm privileged and I'm highly favored to have another opportunity to come and speak life to you today, saints of God. Today we're going to be studying about a subject that God is spirit. God is spirit. And so I pray that you have your Bible, paper, and pencils as we examine the scriptures today from the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. We'll use as a foundational text, but we'll also study some other scriptures that speak to the speak to the fact of the essence of God. It is a difficult concept for us to understand because we are material and physical, but we're trying to relate to a God who is spirit which is some of the insight into why Jesus says we must be born of the Spirit, that he would send the Holy Spirit, and that why Jesus was conceived himself of the Spirit. So I pray that as we go through the scriptures today that you gain more understanding so that you can gain a greater insight into our relationship with God and how we can grow, maintain, and produce fruit from that loving relationship. So today again we're going to be studying God is spirit. And we're going to be using John chapter 4 verse 24 as the foundational text as I mentioned earlier. So let us go ahead and take a look at that portion of scripture and we'll get a word of prayer in. Now the scripture is coming from the context of Jesus meeting a woman at the well and she was talking with Jesus about the fact that her people worship on the mountain and that the Jews worship in Jerusalem and then Jesus says ye worship and let's look at verse 22 so Jesus says verse 21 Jesus said to her woman believe me the hour cometh when ye shall neither worship in this mountain nor at Jerusalem ye worship what ye know not we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews but the hour come, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor today. We ascribe worth to you because of who you are. We thank you, Father, for your dominion and your power and your presence. We thank you for your perfect will that you have already designed for us in heaven. May it be done in earth today. May our minds and hearts be brought into a complete reconciliation and alignment with your spirit today that we may receive the teachings that you will give us, that we may receive revelation and inspiration and illumination as we examine the scriptures and as we think and as we move and breathe throughout life may you manifest yourself through us by your Holy Spirit oh God I thank you today that your manifested presence will come upon the hearers of my voice through healing and provision and salvation in their lives and I thank you for it now in Jesus master's name hallelujah 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 and amen praise the Lord Welcome again to our Seed Time and Harvest Broadcast, Saints. We're studying today from John chapter 4, verse 24 as our foundational text, a lesson entitled, God is Spirit. I want you to say that with me, children of God. God is Spirit. So we're going to take a look at this dialogue again that Jesus had with the woman at the well. Many times people read this portion of scripture, they key in on the fact that Jesus um, offered the lady water and that she would never thirst again but we need to understand that it wasn't a physical water that Jesus was going to give her it was spiritual water that she would receive so he had to try to get her to understand the true way to have relationship with God and so one of Jesus main teachings uh, prior to his uh, death and resurrection was that he knew the disciples would need to understand the nature of their relationship with God going forward beyond his death and resurrection and ascension into heaven. And the nature of that relationship will be a spiritual relationship. For he often told them that after you shall receive power 
the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall receive power. So the relationship would shift from one of maintaining a physical relationship with God in the flesh, which was Jesus, into a spiritual relationship which can get them into the direct communion with God. And this is very true and still applicable to each and every believer today because God is spirit. In order for us to relate to him, we must be born of the Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we begin to see and understand the nature, the character of God on display through our lives. And uh, one of the things that you can look at for this is look at the entire book of Acts. We call it the Acts of the Apostles, but in all actuality, it was the Acts of the Holy Spirit. So we see what happens when people get and maintain and allow the Holy Spirit to to flow through them in communion and fellowship and submission to the Holy Spirit. We saw the types of signs and wonders that manifested in the lives of the early apostles throughout the book of Acts. And this is the same type of relationship that Jesus intended for each and every believer who believe upon his name. That we will receive the Holy Spirit and experience God in the in the only way that god can be experienced in reality is through the spirit so let's see how jesus broke down this explanation to the woman at the well as we go through this lesson and we're also going to think about some of the the lessons that we teach in one of our courses called cornerstones of truth which is biblical doctrines and this is another one of the reasons why we need to get a get a good understanding of the Word of God, which is the Bible, but the only way we can get that great and that good and correct understanding of the Word of God is by the Spirit of God. And so, as we go through this week's lesson, we want to be able to correctly explain the spiritual nature of God. And if we can explain and understand the spiritual nature of God, we'll be able to understand the spiritual nature that we possess and how we can have communion and true fellowship with God. And this is what Jesus was saying to the woman at the well. So if we take a look at this text of scripture again, and a lot of us are somewhat familiar with this text because it's an often used portion of scripture. So let's begin at verse number one, because we want to try to get this text in um, the scripture in as much context as possible. John chapter 4 verse 1 it says when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples he left Judea and departed into Galilee verse 4 and he must needs go to Samaria or another translation says Jesus said I must go to Samaria verse 5 then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus at the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman, or then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me something to drink. For his disciples were going into the city to buy meat. Then the woman of Samaria said unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest me drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Then Jesus answered and said to her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that say to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now let's stop right there. So that last text that we read gives us a little bit of insight into the fact that Jesus wasn't talking about physical water, but he was talking about living water. The word where he says, he would have given thee living water. That is, water that gives life. Not just water that sustains your life. 
water that just sustains your life until you're thirsty again. But this living water will be something that will totally saturate your, the very essence of who we are. We will experience what the psalmist in Psalm 23 experienced, that the Lord will be our shepherd and we shall not want. So here, the lady, just like many of us, we think we understand our relationship with God based on our religious practices, our forms of worship, and such. So that's what she based her relationship with God on, was the practice of religion. And so she she wanted to explain to this man, Jesus, the separation that exists between the different classes of people, of which she was part of a Samaritan people, and she recognized Jewish people who worship in Jerusalem, and that her people worship in the mountains. So Jesus used that as a segue into a conversation with this lady. And I pray today by the power of the Holy Spirit that this conversation will also be a segue into opening up your mind, opening up your heart to receive God, not based on our religious practices, not based on our forms of worship, but based on the reality of who God is. Hallelujah. Somebody said God is spirit. And so here we again, we in verse number 10 of John chapter 4. It says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. I say you saints to God, if each and every one of you listening to the sound of my voice, if you know the gift of God and that he's speaking to you or trying to communicate to you right now you wouldn't you wouldn't seek to get things for yourself from God you would seek to understand who God is and that the gift that he's offering to you today if thou knewest the gift of God Jesus said and who it is not the name that we use to describe who he is, but if you know the gift and know who he is, then thou would have asked him and he would give thee living water. I pray today that for those of you who are really seeking and have a void, an emptiness in your life, I pray today that you can recognize the voice of God speaking to you as Jesus spoke with this woman at the well who was still hindered by her own religious practices and the physical ways in which she could relate to God. But God wanted to communicate to this woman and he wants to communicate to each and every one of us in the only way that we can truly know him. So we prayerfully during the course of this message, I pray that God will use this message to open the understanding of those who are listening to my voice so that we can know the gift of God as Jesus talked about in verse 10. And so that we can also recognize who it is who's speaking to me. And we would no longer be saying, give me to drink what we think we need to sustain our lives. But we would ask him for living water that would saturate our lives. Somebody say hallelujah, give him praise today. So we see the dialogue continue with verse number 12. The woman still stuck in her own way of understanding. The only way that she could know or have been taught or had been uh, brought to understand how she could relate to God. She says in verse 12, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? So she recognized a, a, a physical person who had been taught to her throughout their history, but she did not take the history in order to understand the relationship that the father that she was referring to, which in this case was Jacob. She didn't take it beyond the oral history into what, how did Jacob get in contact or communion with God? And so if you read through the Old Testament text, book of Genesis, you will understand how God uh, gave visions to Jacob, who later changed his name to Israel, he wrestled with an angel, 
He understood that God wasn't just a physical being. He was a spiritual being and he entered into covenant with God. But all she knew was the things that preceded that, that, that happened after uh, Jacob and Israel were formed as a nation. So her understanding was incomplete. And unfortunately, I think many people today, they understand um, their family practices of going to church or being in church or reading their Bibles or attending worship service. They do it based out of the, the historical context or simply based on tradition. And this is what this woman was referring to when she said, you Jews, you worship in Jerusalem and we worship on the mountain, but we have no dealings with each other. So her question to Jesus was, why would you, being a Jew, ask me for something to drink? Because I am a woman, and based on our traditional relationships, I'm a woman of Samaria, and you are a Jew, and we're not supposed to be dealing with each other. So again, I say to each and every one of you, perhaps you may be practicing some type of religion, some type following some type of tradition or philosophy that was taught to you by man. I want you to get past that today. Just like this woman had to get past all the traditions and all the formalities and all the rituals of practicing her faith and religion as the way that she had been taught and allow God to teach you afresh today. Allow yourself to receive not just water to sustain life, but water that will saturate your life from the inside out. But we know in another text of scripture that, that Jesus said that, and living water shall gush forth out of your bosom. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was speaking of the living water, he was talking about the type of water that will come out of you, not the type of water that needs to go in you. For the Holy Spirit will abide inside of you, and out of the abundance of his dwelling, new life will spring forth. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise today because you've been going through all the rituals. You've been practicing all the, the doctrines and rituals and traditions of your faith, of your worship, of your, or your, of your religion. But life is still not complete. You still don't feel satisfied. You don't feel, you don't feel full. You're still seeking and longing for something more. Once you get filled with this living water, as Jesus spoke to this woman at the well, she will no longer thirst for the areas of her life where she was thirsty in. And I say to you, saints of God, neither will you continue to thirst in those areas. But you can't get this by following uh, rules and rituals and, and traditions. You only receive this type of life by receiving the living water that comes by God's spirit. Someone said to me, God is spirit. So God is, is not limited to the physical way of we do things. He's not limited to our way of thinking. And this is what Jesus was explaining to this woman in this text. And I pray and I pray. It is my prayer right now that the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone, helping to bring inspiration, illumination, and understanding so that you can also, as this we'll read that this woman did, that you can also learn to experience God in the only way that you can. So here we are again, she asks in verse 12, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, that is, this physical water of which you speak of, shall thirst again. But, in verse 14, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst, but the water that I give him will be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. Hallelujah, somebody. This is the type of water that we need to receive in order to have the proper relationship with God, to come into complete understanding with God. And so Jesus is using a lot of figurative language in this text. Because since we are physical beings and we think from a physical perspective, we think from a material perspective, so we seek out the things material, we, think out, we seek out the things physical in order to satisfy something that only 
the Spirit of God can satisfy. There's no physical thing we can get, we can obtain or consume that will satisfy the spiritual longing which is within us. It is only by the Spirit of God that that thirst will be quenched. And so Jesus says to this woman, and I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to some of you listening now. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinketh of this water, that is whatever physical or material thing you're trying to uh, attain for yourself that will bring you joy, peace, and, and happiness. You're still going to be thirsting for more. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. You will no longer keep seeking for something to satisfy your longing because your longing will be satisfied. And this is why Jesus says it will be a well of water. Not a well in the physical ground for which you're coming today in the case of the woman to seek a quenching of your thirst, a temporary quenching of your thirst, but this will be a well that is inside of you. Come on, somebody give God praise. And this is why Jesus says you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And living water will be inside of you. Somebody say again with me, God is spirit. So... Verse 15, the woman, after she heard that Jesus told her that there will be a well inside of her where she no longer had to travel to this well to get the true thirsting, to get her true desires and needs met, the true longings for things that she was really missing in life. And she kept trying to quench that thirst emotionally, maybe sexually, maybe materially. And of course, physically, we need water to sustain our physical bodies in which if we don't drink it often, we thirst and we die as a result. And so this is why Jesus spoke what he did in verse 14. But the water I shall give him shall be in him and a well of water springing up into eternal life or everlasting life. And the woman says, sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw so she was still thinking in the physical sense that she had to go somewhere in the case of physical water she would have to come to jacob's well in order to get sustained he was also speaking that she was thirsting in other areas of her life where she had to keep seeking after man after man trying to get that need that emotional physical or sexual need met and she thought she had to continue to keep returning to those same wells in their life. What I don't know what area it may be in your life, saints of God, where you continually try to tap into that same old well again. You continually going back to that same old habit of familiarity or that same old routine. And you're tired of it, but you don't know any other way in which that you can try to feel or quench the thirst that you have. Some people turn into drugs or alcohol, men, women, jobs, money, possessions, but you still feel empty and incomplete inside. Saints of God, this is where this woman was, and that's why Jesus, as we began this chapter, said, I need to go through Samaria. Today, the Holy Spirit is saying he still needs to reach some Samaritans today. Some of you who are listening right now, this message is designed specifically for you today. So that God can offer you the living water that he's offered this woman. So the woman says again in verse 15. Sir, give me this water. Perhaps you right now. Holy Spirit is convicting your heart. Perhaps you need to speak out to God like that right now. You, you don't have to say it out loud. You can say it within yourself. Sir, give me this water. That I thirst not. Neither come hither or continue to seek after quenching that thirst in any other way. Jesus said to her, go, call thy husband and come hither. He wanted to deal with the actual reality of thirsting in her spiritual life, not her physical life. She could have drank in the physical water. It would have satisfied the physical nature of what her body needed, but she needed more than just physical water. A lot of you seeking out the things that, that are not going to solve the real issue with you. It's not going to reach the root of the problem. It's not going to bring about the full solution for you. And therefore, you have to keep going back over and over and over again to that well 
that you're trying to tap into in order to satisfy that longing that you have. Jesus got right to the issue with this woman and says, go call thy husband and come hither. In other words, I will give you what you're asking for, but let's deal with the area of real thirsting in your life. Don't try to speak around the issue. Don't try to bypass the issues. And this is true and relevant for all of us. We want things from God, but we don't want to come clean with God. Go call your husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And then Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said that I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. He's identifying the area of thirst for her. The area that after the first husband, she thought that she would be okay alone. But she didn't. She had to seek out another man. After the second one, she had to seek out another one. Just as she would come to the well to get physical water. Day after day, she continually went to that well of companionship or relationship where there's physical, emotional needs that obviously none of these men could fulfill for her. For Jesus says, you've had five husbands and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband and thou hast said it truly. Oh, so the woman knew that Jesus had identified her true area of thirst. What, what area is it in your life, saints of God, where, you know, you're trying to seek out a physical thing or material thing in order to satisfy that want. I want you today to acknowledge out to God as the Holy Spirit speaks to you. So, Father, that is my area, and I pray that you would give me water that I may not thirst, neither come hither, that I would neither continue to go through this repeated cycle in my life. The woman says in verse 19, Sir, I can see that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. I had been following the principles of my fathers, the ways that they taught me that will, that will that will bring me into relationship with God. But it never dealt with this area of my life. Perhaps some of you you going you've been going to church, you've been raised in the church, you may be a pastor or leader of the church. Just as this woman was, she was worshiping and following all the principles that she had been taught, but none of those things she had been taught dealt with this area of her life, and she was still completely empty and unsatisfied inside even though outwardly she was going through all the routines and rituals that everybody else was thanks to god that don't need to continue to be your situation god wants to set you free he wants to quench that area of thirst in your life someone said to me god is spirit so the woman said our fathers worship in this mountain according to our tradition and ye say that jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship at least according to jewish rituals and traditions and then jesus says to her woman believe me the hour cometh and i pray the hour is coming upon some of you right now when ye shall neither worship in this mountain nor at jerusalem but you will worship the father in spirit and in truth and this is what i pray the holy spirit is manifesting through this message to some of you going through whatever you're doing whatever rituals and traditions and philosophies that man has taught you and that you're practicing but you know if you're honest with yourself, you're not getting any more happy. You're not getting more complete. You're not more whole. You're not more healthy in your mind, body, or your spirit. Jesus is speaking to you today, to that area of thirst in your life. So he says, ye worship what ye know not. The woman says, we worship the Jews. We, you, you Jews worship in Jerusalem, and we worship in the mountain. But Jesus says in verse 23 to her, and the Holy Spirit is saying this to some of you right now, but the hour cometh and now is, somebody said and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. Now, how can we worship him in spirit and truth? And why is it that we have to worship him in spirit and truth? Because God is spirit. Somebody said it with me. God is spirit. He's not a part of your routines and your traditions and your rituals. God is beyond all that. And as long as you stay stuck in that format and thinking that that's the way to God, you're, you're going to continue to go through a cycle of thirsting and wanting and desiring over and over in life. But Jesus says, I have come, just as he spoke to this woman at the well, that you may have life and have life more abundantly. In this case, he used the word everlasting or eternal life. 
Jesus wants to give you that abundant, everlasting life where you never thirst again, saints of God. So God is spirit, and therefore they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Saints, I pray today that you will receive what God is speaking to you by his Holy Spirit. Just say, Lord, give me this water that I may never thirst again, that I may never continue to go through this cycle. And I believe that the Lord Jesus will hear you just as he heard this woman. Confess the areas of your life. Allow him to search you or the areas of your, of your seeking and your lostness. And watch God give you the water that will satisfy you in ways that the things that you've been trying to do for yourself have never done. Father, I thank and I praise you today for this living word going forth. May it go into every dry place in the lives of your people to bring wholeness and healing and deliverance and the abundance of everlasting joy and peace by your spirit. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen.